And a good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to our Bird Notes. Dwight Davis with you. It is usually in the springtime rather than the summer that our attention turns to bird songs. Males stake out their territories and proclaim them with song. The music diminishes as the summer comes on. And at this time of year, when summer is tired and some of the leaves are starting to lose their green, bird song is not given much attention. Oh, mockingbirds are singing, of course, night and day, and the cardinals are still at it, and the Carolina wren can always find something or somebody to scold. The red-eyed vireo spends his summer in constant monologue, high in the leaves, as we discussed last week. And the nondescript peewee also chimes in, even in this late summer season. It is the peewee we want to talk about this morning, in part because this bird is so easy to overlook. It's small and dusky. The species name is sordidulous, meaning dirty-looking. The genus name of the peewee is shared with some other flycatchers and also alludes to the bird's appearance. It is contopus, meaning short-footed. The peewee is a typical flycatcher in its behavior. It will sit quietly on a branch in the woods, waiting for an insect to fly by, and then dart out and snap it up and then return to the branch and await another morsel. The bird is sparrow-sized, about six inches long, dusky, olive-brown above, whitish below. Helping to clinch the identification of this bird are two wing bars, a yellow lower mandible, and no eye ring. These field marks will help distinguish it from other flycatchers, notably the Phoebe, as well as the identification-defying Empidernax flycatchers. Both the Phoebe and the peewee get their common names from their calls. And the call of the peewee can be heard in the woods right now. I've always thought that the two versions of this plaintive, almost lazy call perfectly reflect the languid days of late summer when the air is still and humid and the season is tired and almost run its course. <laughs> 